Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from the code called K the smallest element in a BST. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given the root of a binary search tree and an integer K, return the Kth smallest value one index of all the values of the nodes in the tree. So example one, we have root node three, then one, four, two, and K is one. Now this is a binary search tree, which means all the nodes to the left of a root, the entire left subtree, will always hold values less than the root's value and everything to the right will always be greater than it. And that would hold true for every single node, no matter where we are. So even at this node over here, left would be smaller than one and right would be greater than one. And both of these should be smaller than three because it's the left side. Now here we want the smallest value k is one. So we want the leftmost node. That's going to be the smallest node, right? So that's going to be one over here. Example two, we have five, three, six, two, four, and one. And here k equals three. So starting at the bottom most node, this is our smallest node. This would be k equals one. But we want k equaling three, the third smallest value. So we go up a level over here. So we have two as our second smallest node. And we have nothing to the right over here. So we're done with the left subtree of our roots node. So we can return back to that root, which means this is the third smallest node in the subtree. And so we output three. Okay, say I have the following input to binary search tree as my example, and k is four. How do I find the fourth smallest element of a binary search tree? Which means every node to the left of a root node is smaller than it. Everything to the right of it is greater than it, no matter where we are in the tree. Over here, right? Everything to the left is smaller than the root's value, and everything to the right, the right subtree, is going to be greater than the root's value. So the smallest value is going to be the leftmost value, right? I start at eight. I see that I have nodes in my left subtree. So I'm going to go to those nodes. If there's still left nodes to process, I know that's going to be smaller than my own node. So I'm going to go to it. At this point, I see there are no more left nodes, which means this is the smallest value of my binary search tree over here. Now, how do I find the second smallest value? I go back up to my root. Now, this is going to be my second smallest value. Now, what's going to be the third smallest? I'm going to go to the right subtree because all of this is still the left subtree of this root. So the third smallest value is going to be somewhere in here. Now at this node, I see there's still left nodes to be processed. So I'm going to go as far left as I can again. At this point, I know this is my third smallest value. Now what's the fourth smallest value? This is going to be this node over here, number six. Now if I want to keep going, right, what's my fifth smallest value? I see there's nothing to the right over here, so I can return to this root over here. We just covered everything to the left, so the next smallest value would be this root over here. And I keep repeating this process. This is just an in-order traversal where we go left, then root, then right. And we've done in-order traversal before. We've done it both recursively and iteratively, and I'm going to link that down below. If you do want to understand this way more in detail, go check out that video. But all we're doing is an in-order traversal and keeping track of all the nodes that we go through. Once we hit k nodes, we know we found our kth smallest value in the binary search tree. So we're going to go ahead and code up the recursive solution first, do a complete walkthrough of that so we know how that looks like, and then also do the iterative approach just so we know how both work. To start off with the recursive solution, we know we're going to be making multiple calls. And what do we want to keep track of? We want to keep track of k. And once we find that kth smallest value, we want to stop. We can just return right away. So for that, I'm going to be keeping track of both k and our result. If we find that, if it's no longer none, we can exit our recursive call right away. So self.k is going to equal k and self.result equals none. As of right now, we have no kth smallest value. So now we want to go ahead and define a recursive function. We're going to define this nested within the kth smallest one. So this is going to be called in order. And I'm going to be passing in root. Now, if our root that's being passed in is none, we're going to return. There's nothing to process. So if root is none, or once we find out this result, we're going to store it in this value. So if it's no longer none, we also return. There's no need to keep going through this recursive call. So if root is none or self.result is not none, we return. If we don't return here, what do we do? So say we're passing in eight as our root. We don't return right now. We want to go down as far to the left as possible. So we're going to call in order again with root dot left. So in order with root dot left. So we're calling this with node eight. We don't return over here and we call in order again with eights left. So we call this with two. We don't return. We call this again with twos left, which is one. We call this with ones left which is none. And at that point we return, which means we're back at this node over here. So now that we're at our node, we want to decrease K's count. 
So solve.k is going to be minus equal 1. And if k goes all the way down to 0, we know we have the value that we want. So if solve.k equals 0, solve.result is going to equal the current root's value. So root.val. And we can just return. If we don't return from here, if k isn't 0, well, now we want to go down our right path. So we're going to call in order again with root.right. And that's it for our recursive function. Now we want to go ahead and call this. So we're going to call in order with our current root that's being passed in. And in the end, all we have to do is return solve.result. So return solve.result. And we can go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now let's do a quick walkthrough of this recursive solution with this example right over here. For this example, we have the same tree over here and k equals 4 going through this code line by line. The first thing that we do is define solve.k, so that's just going to be 4. Next, we define result, which is none. Now we define this function over here in order and we finally call it at this line over here. So the next line is going to be in order, passed in with the root of the tree, which is 8. So we're going to be calling in order with 8 and 8 is not none and solve.result is none. So neither of these conditions are true, so we don't return at this point. Next, we call in order with root.left. So what is 8's left node? That's going to be 2, which means we're calling this function again with 2. Calling this with 2 again, these don't hold true, so we can't return. And we call this again with 2's left. So 2's left is 1, which means we're calling in order with node 1. Here, root is not none, and solve.result is still none, so we don't return. And we call this again with 1's left. Now, 1's left is none, so we're calling in order with none. So now once we go into this if condition, root is none, and so we return. So we're returning to our caller, which was 1. So we exit out of this function, and we're back to in order of 1. So we just return from 1's left, and now we want to subtract 1 from k's value. We're in this line over here with root being 1. So now k equals 3, and we make a check. k isn't 0, so we can't return yet. And now we call in order with 1's right. So in order with none, because one's right is none, is going to just return because here we see that root is none. So again, we just return to our caller of one. So we exit out of here and we've just completed the last line for the in order when root was one. So we're completed out of this function and we can return to one's caller. So one's caller was two. So we're back to root node two over here. We're just going back up our recursive call stack. We're just bubbling right back up. So now that we're at 2, we had finished going in order of root.left. We just completed that one subtree. And now we're going to subtract 1 from k's value. So k is now 2, and that makes sense. This is the second smallest value in our tree. And we don't go into this condition over here. And now we call root.right because we just completed left. We completed our own value. And now we're going to call in order with root.right. So 2's right is 6, so we're calling in order with root node 6. 6 is not none, self.result is also still none, so we don't return, and we call in order of 6's left. So 6's left is 3, right? And this makes sense because we always want to do left, then root, and then right. This is an in order traversal. So before we can process 6's node, we want to go to its left child. So at this point, we're calling in order with root node 3. We see that it's not none. Result is still none, don't return, and we call in order with its left. So in order with none because three's left child is none, we know we're just going to return out of here. We're going to return back to three's value. So we exit out of here. We just finished the left child of three, and now we want to process the root node before we can process the right. So self.k minus equals one, we're finally at root node three. So this is now going to be one. We don't go into this condition over here, and now we call right. Again here, this is in order of none, so we know this is just going to return to its caller. So we're back at 3 over here, right? We just did left, then we did root, and now we did right. We finished going through both left, root, and right subtrees of root node 3. So we're going to return to its caller. So we completed the left subtree of 6 now. We just finished this. Now we're going to process 6 before calling its right subtree. So at this point, we do solve.k minus equals 1, which puts this at 0. So now since this is 0, we're going to set solve.result to be root.val. So the current root that we're on is 6, which means solve.result equals 6. And we return from here. We don't need to keep going down the right subtree. So we return over here to our caller, which was 2. And that just finished its right tree. So this is done as well. We go back up to 8 and we return. 
So now we're out of in order of original color of root being eight, and we just return self.result, which now stores value six. So this was the recursive approach for it. Now let's do the iterative one. Now for binary trees, usually both approaches work recursive and iterative. Just depends on which one you prefer, using which one you're more comfortable with. For me, this one is a little bit more intuitive, the iterative approach for an in-order traversal. So we're going to go through this one as well. The first thing we want to do here is define a stack. So this is going to be my empty stack over here. And we want the same logic, right? We still want our result, which initially I'm going to assign to none. So here, instead of making recursive calls, we're just going to be using a while loop. So while there's still nodes to process and our stack isn't empty. And a way to think about this is instead of having a recursive call stack, we're now just storing all of our nodes in an actual physical stack. So while stack or root, while either there are values in the stack or the root is not none, there's still something that we can process. Remember what we wanted to do. We wanted to go as far left as we can. So we're just going to append our root value to stack and move root to be root.left. So while root stack.append root and root equals root dot left. So we go all the way down. And once we exit out of this loop, now at this point, root will be none. So we've exited. Now we want to pop off the last element of stack and call this our new root node. So node is going to equal stack.pop. And since this is the root node we're considering, we sort of finish going down our left subtree. We're going to subtract one from k. So k minus equals one. And we want the same check, right? If k equals zero, we want to return root.val. And if that's not the case, now we want to consider our right subtree. Root is going to equal root dot right. And that is it. So let's go ahead and submit this as well. None type object has no attribute val. Let's see. That's because this should have been root. Let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. But before leaving, let's just do a quick walkthrough line by line of our code so we can see exactly how and why our code is working. For our walkthrough, let's just use the same example we've used before, k is 4, and we have the same root tree over here. So we pass in root node 8 and k being 4. The first thing we do is define a stack, so that's just going to be empty, and our result is none. Now while stack or root, stack here is empty, so this is not true but root is not none. So we can go in this while loop. And right now root is eight. So let me write that down as well. So we have root being eight and we're in this while loop over here. While root, that is true, root is not none. We're gonna append to stack our root. So right now I have eight and we're gonna set root equal to root dot left. So now what's the left child of eight? That's gonna be two. So we're back in this while loop. Our root is not none, so we can go inside of it. Stack dot append root. So we're appending two to our stack and setting root to equal root dot left. We go back in here, root is not none, append to stack our current root and set root equal to root.left. So one's left is none. So we go back in here and we can't go in here, right? Root is now none. So this is no longer true. And we go into this line, root equals stack.pop. We just covered the left subtree of one and now we want to deal with one's root itself. So now root is going to equal the last element we added to stack, which was one. And now we decrease the counter for k. So instead of four, it is now three. We can't go into this if condition k is not zero. So we can't return the value just yet. And now we set root to be root dot right. So that's going to be none. And this is because we just did the left side. We did the root and now we want to process the right. So we go back into this while loop over here. The root is none, but stack is not. We have values in stack. So we can go inside this while loop. Now over here, Root is none, so we can't go into here. We can't check left subtrees because root is already none. At this point, we pop off the next value in stack, so that's going to be two, and set that to be root. We again decrease the count for k, so it is now two, and we set root to be root.right. Now, what is the right child of two? That's going to be six. We go back over here. While root, this is true, our root is six, we want to see if we can go as far to the left as possible. So we append to stack our current value. That's going to be six. And we set root to be root.left, which is three. We go back in this while loop again. We append three to stack and set it equal to its left child. At this point, root is none. So we exit out of here. And this just means that we found our next leftmost point. So now at this point, we can pop off stack to get that node that we were working with. And we set this equal to three. We decrease the count for k again. It is now one and we go into root.right. So now root is none. We're back in this while loop, we skip over this, and we pop off the next element in stack. That was six. 
So we're dealing with 6 now, and we subtract 1 from k. At this point, it's 0, so we can return root.val, which is 6. It's the value of our current root. And say k was more than just 4. It was 5, right? At this point, what we would have done is gone through 6's right child, which again would have been none. So we would have been back in this while loop and gotten the next element, which was 8. And just continuing this pattern, we can get whatever k smallest value we want. So we just went ahead and solved k smallest element in a binary search tree. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.